In this lesson, we're going to look at the four levels of protein structure, including the two types of secondary structure, and learn to distinguish between globular and fibrous proteins. We started this chapter by looking at individual amino acids and understanding their structure and some of their properties. We then moved to forming polypeptides where we connected amino acids together. Now, we're going to look at more about polypeptides but these polypeptides are such that they form proteins, which can also function as enzymes. The protein structure has four levels. It is essential for a protein to function correctly that it have all four levels of structure and that they be correct for that particular protein. If there's an error or a typo, for example, in the sequence of amino acids, then we may not form the structures we need for that protein or enzyme to function as it should. We'll go through all four levels of structure, including the properties of them and the types of forces that hold them together. We'll start with primary structure, which we've already covered when we looked at polypeptides. Primary structure is just the sequence of amino acids, and those are held together by amid bonds. Next, we look at secondary structure, and there are two main shapes that we see in that secondary structure. The first is the beta pleated sheet, and the second is the alpha helix. Hydrogen bonding within the regions that have the beta pleated sheet or the alpha helix hold it in that particular shape. And these are hydrogen bonds between the peptide backbone, so the side groups are not involved in forming these shapes. What is the best way to describe the structure represented by the red segment? So we're looking at this region right in there. So this is part of the secondary structure, and this is an alpha helix. So if you're not sure about a helix, imagine the double helix of a DNA to kind of get a picture of what that should look like. If it was a beta pleated sheet, it would have more of a fan fold effect. Next is our tertiary structure. And this is where the polypeptide begins to fold in on itself. And there are interactions between the side chains that hold it into that structure. Think about what it would look like if you took a big long piece of yarn and kind of wadded it all up. You would start to see that the pieces fold in on themselves and kind of become an entangled mess. And that's what the proteins are doing. But they're doing it very intentionally because the space that the shape that they form gives that protein its function. Some proteins and enzymes have quaternary structure, but not all. Quaternary structure occurs when one or more polypeptide chains come together and interact to be functional as a group. They are also held together by interactions in the side chain, and they have the same types of interactions that we see in tertiary structures. One example of a protein that has to have quaternary structure to function is hemoglobin. There are four regions of hemoglobin that are made up of four separate polypeptide or amino acid chains. Each color represents a separate level in hemoglobin. What level of structure is or are represented in this image? So we have one region here, which is in red, a region here in purple, a region here in green, and a region here in blue. This shape actually represents all four levels of structure. And the four levels come because we have primary, which is an amino acid sequence. We see some alpha helix and beta pleated sheets, so that's secondary. Tertiary is the folding and twisting within each color or within each region. And the quaternary structure occurs because the interaction between multiple of the polypeptide chains. While hemoglobin has four polypeptides that function together. Not all of them have four. There are some with two or three or more that come together to form that, and all of those are considered quaternary structure. 
The last thing we'll look at just very briefly, and this is the difference between fibrous versus globular proteins. And the names are pretty self-explanatory. Fibrous proteins tend to be long and skinny, and globular proteins tend to be, well, a glob, and they're kind of all wadded up, kind of like our ball of yarn. One common place that we see fibrous proteins is in our hair because we tend to have long hair. So even if it's curly, it's still the proteins are fairly straight, and so we're dealing with fibrous proteins.